Hello everyone, it's Aaron Ingebrigtsen, that's me, and I wanted to talk to you about math. Now, you may have noticed that I tend to rant on my videos. Well, I'm going to try not to rant, but oh, I, I do like a good rant. Anyway, so, all math at its most basic level is summation. That means adding stuff up of positive and negative numbers. Yes, there are negative numbers, as in less than zero. Uh, we represent events that occur in math using expressions. An expression is basically a story or a description. It's telling you the progression of what happened. This happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. And when you add all those things up, you get an answer. You get to know what it is that you've still got. Now, why is this useful? Well, you do you have a bank account? Do you have money? Do you earn money and spend money? I do, and I don't have a job. I'm on disability because I'm too disabled to work. I have extremely painful problems to deal with, and it makes it completely impossible for me to work, even sitting at a desk. Uh, it's just not possible. I can sit at a desk for a short period of time. Anyway, back to math. I already told you that it's a summation at the most basic level. Everything else, all the operations you can imagine, from all the different kinds of mathematics ever invented, are shortcuts. Because who wants to sit there adding 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 ad nauseum? Wouldn't you rather do 2 times 12? instead of adding two twelve different times? I would. I like shortcuts. I try to find shortcuts to everything. I try to make everything as easy as possible. That's basically what operations are in math, is trying to make everything as easy as possible, as short of an expression as possible, so that it's easier to move things around. Okay? Wouldn't you rather be able to do things as easy as possible in math? I know I do. That's what it's all about. That's why we have operations. But you can't have these operations that are shortcuts and shortcuts of shortcuts and shortcuts of shortcuts unless you have a set of basic rules for how to write an expression and then how to correctly interpret an expression that somebody else wrote. Basically, everybody in the entire world has agreed that we need one set of rules. And that set of rules is called the order of operations. Now, in America and uh, some other places, I don't know, a lot of teachers have been teaching kids PEMDAS or PEMDAS, whatever. P-E-M-D-A-S. P-E-M-D-A-S. The M-D is interchangeable. The A-S is interchangeable. That's why in some other places they teach BODMAS. B-O-D-M-A-S. It's the same thing. And in Germany they teach punkt vor Streck, which means dots before lines because they use dots to indicate division and multiplication two dots like on your clock your digital clock and your watch shows you division so like okay look at the clock what time is it for me the time is 21:19 now, for you people who don't understand 24-hour clocks, 
that means it's seven nine no not seven nine nineteen pm nine ten eleven okay that's how you get it that's how you understand twenty four hour time is math twenty one minus nine they saying oh yeah um, division when you look at your clock that is telling you that there's a certain number of hours and a certain number of minutes and it's separating those two things with a division symbol at least in some places it's basically a giant fraction using a different number system than base 10. Our time is base 60. Like Babylonian. I like the Babylonian number system. Everything goes from 0 to 59 and then 0 again. 60 minutes is an hour. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Everything is shortcuts. So, you've got a bunch of additions, and you want to shorten that up. The shortcut for that is multiplication. Well, what if you have a bunch of multiplications, like 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2? Well, do you want to shorten that? I do. That's why you have exponents. Exponents are shortcuts for multiplication. So when you see an exponent, what do you do? You do that before you do the multiplication. You do that before you do the addition. Because of logic. Because it's a shortcut of a shortcut. You do the shortcuts first. So you do the shortcut of a shortcut before you do the shortcut. And then you do the shortcut before you do the additions. That's just logic. That's how math works. That's how it's always worked. For over 500 years now. And what about parentheses and other grouping symbols? Those are, those are used to shorten an expression. Or to make it so that you can apply an exponent to a negative number. Like say you have a negative 2 that needs to be times negative 2. Well, how do you express that? Because if you write down something minus 2 squared, are you saying that you're subtracting the total of 2 squared from the problem? No. You want to do negative 2 times negative 2. So you use parentheses. You put a, right, you put a, a left parenthesis negative 2, right parenthesis, and then square it. That negative 2 gets squared. So in the problem you write, whatever it is, plus parenthesis, negative 2, parenthesis, squared. So you're squaring a negative number. And the third thing that you use parentheses for is to express a fraction bar. A fraction bar, or vinculum, is when you have a long line and you have a bunch of stuff on top of that line and a bunch of stuff underneath that line. But how do you express that when you can only type on a keyboard in one line? You can't have two lines, three lines, whatever. You can only have one line. And you have to use a division symbol instead of a big long line separating stuff on top and stuff on bottom. Well, that's what parentheses are useful for also. You use parentheses to say this group of stuff is on top and then divide and then on the other side of that you can write another parenthesis and say this group of stuff 
is on the bottom of that fraction and you form a fraction bar with your parentheses. So there's three uses for parentheses or whatever other grouping symbols you want. A fraction bar is a grouping symbol. What else, what else, what else? Um, a lot of people are getting confused by PEMDAS because they think that you have to go each letter. P, then E, then M, then D, then A, then S. No, that's wrong. Multiplication does not necessarily come before division. Multiplication and division are each other's inverse. They are the inverse of each other. So if you had something times two divided by two, they cancel each other out. Why are you working on it? There's no work to do. If you see three times two divided by two, you already know it's three. Just like if you have three plus two minus two, you already know it's three. Why are you adding and subtracting? Why are you making more work for yourself? You can already clearly see that they cancel each other out. Just like a, a uh, piece of matter and a piece of antimatter coming together, pop! They zero each other out. They take each other out of existence. And in, and in their place is a blast of energy. That's what they use for energy on Star Trek. In all their starships, they have the, the antimatter getting smashed together with matter in a controlled explosion that creates a massive amount of energy that they then use to warp space. Positive and negative zero each other out. Just like that. Gone. 3 plus 2 minus 2 it's 3. 3 times 2 divided by 2 it's 3. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to work on it. When you see that, all you have to know is that they cancel each other out. They are each other's inverse. And that's why you do it left to right. When you have mo only multiplication and division to do, you do it left to right. When you have only addition and subtraction to do, you do it left to right. But even if you don't want to use PEMDAS, all you have to do is remember that all numbers with a negative symbol next to them are negative numbers. You can pick up that negative number and move it. If you had 3 plus 2 minus 2, you could pick up that negative 2 and move it to the front. So you have negative 2 plus 3 plus 2. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can. It's called the commutative property of math. You can move terms around and still get the same answer. And if you move a term and you get a different answer, then you're doing math wrong. You were just wrong. Now on to juxtaposition, otherwise known as implied multiplication. It's just multiplication, people. It's just multiplication. There's nothing special about it. When a number is next to parentheses, it's just normal multiplication. You can replace that, that non-space between them with a multiplication symbol, and it'll be the exact same thing. Now let's say that you have 6 divided by 2, parentheses, 1 plus 2, parentheses. No, you do not multiply the 2 against the parentheses first. Didn't I just tell you left to right when you're doing multiplication and division? It's true. That's how you do math. 6 divided by 2 is a fraction. All division is fractions. 
It's an actual mathematical fact. It's proven and provable. 6 divided by 2 is the exact same thing as 6 times 0 0.5. 6 times 1 half. If you take out that 0.5 and just have 6 there and move that 0.5 to the other side, so you have 6 times parentheses 1 plus 2 parentheses times 0.5, you will get the exact same answer of 9. Not 1. 1 is incorrect. Because of the commutative property of math, no matter how you move terms around in an expression, you get the same answer. And if you get a different answer, you're wrong. You're just wrong. You're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. So, 6 over 2 is the same thing as 6 divided by 2. And if you want to do distribution, as in multiplying that against what's inside the parentheses, before, you know, instead of doing what's inside the parentheses and then getting rid of the parentheses, you can do that. Yeah, sure, you can do distribution, but you have to distribute the entire term. Why do I keep mentioning terms? It's important. Terms, if you didn't know, are anything other than a plus sign. If it's not a plus sign, it's part of a term. 6 over 2. 6 divided by 2. That's a term. You can't take that 2 and put it somewhere else and say it doesn't exist anymore and just have the 6 divided by whatever you're going to have a completely different expression. It's not the same expression. It's not doing the same thing in math. It's a term. You have to move the term. Now, I earlier I did say that you can convert 6 divided by 2 into 6 times 0.5, or 6 times 1 half, and that's true. You can take the lower part of any fraction and make it a 1 over whatever it is and make that part of a multiplication so let's say you have 3 fifths 3 fifths is the same thing as 3 times 1 fifth because what is that saying? what are you saying when you say 3 times 1 fifth? you're saying there are 3 1 fifths how is 3 1 fifths not exactly the same thing as 3 fifths? It is exactly the same thing. So you can take any amount, any fraction, and separate the top from the bottom by putting a 1 over that thing and moving it around as a multiplication. So if you had 16 fifths, you can say, okay, I'm going to take that 16 out of there, and I'm going to turn that into a 1 fifth that's multiplying. And now I have 16 times 1 fifth. You can do that. Why not? And when you have two fractions that you're multiplying against each other, you multiply the top and the bottom against each other. So let's say you have 3 fifths times 3 fourths. Well, you multiply 4 times 5. That's 20. And you multiply 3 times 3, that's 9. You have 9 twentieths. That's how that's how it works. All divisions are fractions. It doesn't matter what they are. If you have 16 fifths and you want to divide that in half, you flip the one half and it becomes 2 over 1 and you multiply them. So the 16 becomes 32 
over 5. Why? Because how many halves are there in that? You're dividing it by one half. Anyway, so... There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of people who just don't understand. Oh, and the obelisk, which is a line with two dots, one dot above and one dot below, is exactly the same thing as the slash. It's called um, solidus. I like using the solidus all the time because it's easy to just type it on a computer keyboard. It's the exact same thing. It's a division symbol. There are multiple division symbols, just like there are multiple multiplication symbols. They all mean the same thing. There's no difference whatsoever. If you want to indicate a fraction bar, you have to actually use a fraction bar, or you have to use parentheses, or some other grouping symbol, whatever. If you want to group things, we have to use grouping symbols. You don't get to claim that this is now a grouping without a grouping symbol. You have to have grouping symbols, or else you will cause confusion. And the whole reason to have a basic set of universal rules is to eliminate confusion. Why are you causing confusion? Why is that such a good thing to you, that you cause confusion? Stop it. Stop causing confusion. In every math problem, there's only one answer. There's only one correct answer for every math problem, no matter what it is. You can use all sorts of different ways of getting to that answer, but they all must agree on the same answer. Every single method of doing math has to arrive at the same answer answer or else you did something wrong you did math wrong there's no such thing as an ambiguous problem that gives you multiple possible answers and so you can't possibly really solve it that's not how math works if that were how math works then our technology wouldn't work this tablet I'm using to record this video wouldn't work it wouldn't even exist. Most of our technology would not exist. The glasses I'm wearing probably would not exist if math didn't work. Because math is in everything. Math is in our chemistry. Math is in our metallurgy. Math is in our everything. It's how we make plastic. It's how we make everything. It's how we do everything. All of our buildings use math. When we travel in an airplane, we use math. Math is everywhere. You can't have total confusion and total chaos in this world. You have to have a basic set of rules that always apply. The order of operations always applies. But if you don't want to use the order of operations, how about this? How about this? Just remember this simple thing. Simply simplify the terms in the expression. If it's not a plus sign, it's part of a term. Then sum. You simplify the terms and then you sum. You add up the results of all the various terms. You simplify them all down to positive and negative numbers being summed. I really like using an RPN calculator. You've never heard of that, have you? A lot of people haven't. An RPN calculator uses reverse reverse Polish notation, which means that the operations are put in after you put in the numbers. Each number that you put in gets shoved into the bottom of the stack in the calculator. 
So you put in 1, and that's at the bottom. You put in 2, and now 2 is at the bottom. You put in 3, and now 3 is at the bottom. You put in 4, and now 4 is at the bottom. Now let's say you want to add them all up. You push the plus sign, and it adds the 3 and the 4. And now the total for that is at the bottom. And then you add that total to the 2. Now that total is at the bottom. Then you add the 1. Now that's the only number on the screen. That's how an RPM calculator works. You do the operations after you put in the numbers. Cool, huh? But you have to understand how math works in order to do it correctly. You have to understand that you're simplifying terms and then summing them up. Okay? If you have a term, you want that simplified before you sum it up with some other term. So let's say you have 6 divided by 2 times 3. Well, you, you put in the 6, then the 2, then the 3, and then you push the multiply button. No, wait, no. It's the wrong order. See, I get messed up sometimes, too. You put in the 6, you put in the 2, you push the divide button because you want them to divide first. And then you put in the 3 and you push the multiply button and then you get the correct answer. Or you can flip it around and you put in the 3, then you put in the 6 and the 2, and you push the divide button and the multiply button and you get the correct answer. You have to do things in the right order, order or you don't get the right answer. Remember how how I was saying you do left to right? If you have 6 divided by 2 times 3, you're going left to right. So you're not going to multiply the 3 times 2. No, 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 no. You're basically multiplying 3 against 6, and then dividing that in half. That's how you get 9. You're taking a fraction, and you're multiplying that fraction. Anyway, I guess I'm done. Have a nice day.